in this video, we're going to talk about what a normal distribution is, but in the process, we're going to talk about more basic things as well, like what's a random variable, what is a distribution in general, and what is it about a distribution that would make it a normal distribution. So first of all, let's talk about what a random variable is. So, so far, you might be used to thinking of variables like x as just some unknown that you're trying to solve for. But what if your variable x uh, was income rather than you know, one specific person's income that you're trying to solve for? If x is just income, well, it's basically clear that x can take on a number of values, right? And it, there's not just one single unknown value of x, but rather there's many possible values. So a random variable is precisely a variable that could take on one of many values, each value with a differing probability, right? So some incomes are more likely than other incomes, right? And that's what makes this a random variable because for any one given instance of income, for any given individual's income, it's still, it's random. It's a random draw from a distribution that you know something about. So that really brings us to then what's a distribution. Distribution and random variable, these, these sort of go hand in hand. So every random variable has a distribution that it comes from, right? It's, it's giving you information about that random variable. So what are examples of distributions? Well, a really simple distribution is called the binomial distribution. And that's where the random variable can take on one of two values, right? So a binomial distribution can, uh, that, for example, heads or tails, right? So since there's only one of two values, and in this case, the probabilities are 50 and 50% each. So that's, uh, that's what a random, that's a binomial distribution for a random variable. Uh, another distribution is a uniform distribution where all values are equally likely. Suppose we lived in a world where every income, let's say between 30,000 and 100,000 was equally likely. So if the x-axis is the income and the y-axis is the probability of that specific income, and if let's say 30,000, however likely it is to find an individual with an income of 30,000, if that was the same as 31,000, 50,000, 100,000, if all of these have the same likelihood of being observed, right? So when you take that random draw of that random variable uh, and uh, you find well, what the income is, if it's an equally equal probability, equally likely to be any of these numbers, then that's called a uniform distribution, right? Now, so that, that's really what, a, so, so the cool thing about just distributions more generally. So here, if I were to then ask you, what if this was it? What if all incomes in a particular town were uniformly distributed between 30,000 and 100,000 and that's it. You're, meaning nobody has an income of more than 100 or nobody has an income of less than 30. Now, if I were to ask you, what's the probability of finding somebody with an income of say 50,000 or less, so 50,000 like this, or even less, meaning 30, 31, everything in between all the way through 50. Well, and here's where this is called, uh, you know, a PDF, not to be confused with uh, the thing that your grandparents still don't know how to open and have to email you about. But a PDF here is a probability distribution function. And what this is saying is, it's the distribution that gives you the probability of each thing. And the area underneath the PDF is basically the percentile. It's the cumulative percentage. It's the Percentile of 50,000, meaning how likely are you to have an income of 50,000 or less? That's this probability. This area to the left is the probability of earning 50,000 or less. So obviously, all of this has to shade up to 100% because there's 100% uh, of people between in that distribution, right? So that, this is what a, a random distribution, a random variable is. Again, it's something that can take on one of, a, of many values, each value with a different probability. And if you graph out what's the probability of each of those values, that's a distribution, a PDF. And finally, what is it about a PDF or a distribution of a random variable that would make it normal? Well, income isn't quite uniformly distributed like that hypothetical town, right? 
most people have a value of the income that's pretty close to the average income, right? So let's say the average income in a town is $60,000. Most people, that's gonna be a lot more likely than somebody who earning 30,000, right? Or even a lot more likely than somebody who's earning 100,000, right? So let's say 100,000 and 30,000 are both less likely. Again, the Y axis is the likelihood, the probability of observing that income. So 60,000 is a lot more common than, than those. And the further you move, the less and less likely you are. And that sort of looks like a bell curve. So this is called the normal distribution, the bell curve. And essentially the features of the bell curve are that the, the median, the middle value and, and the, is the mean, meaning the average, and that that is, it's symmetric, meaning values to the left and the right uh, are the distribution looks the same on the left and the right. You know, you're equally likely to be uh, 40K above here as you are to be 40K less than the average. Another cool property about the normal distribution is what's called the empirical rule. And what that's saying is that about 68% of observations of all data fall in within one standard deviation of the mean, right, of that middle value. Uh, another thing here is that it's unimodal, meaning there's one, uh, one hump and that's at the, the mean and about 68% of the data fall within one standard deviation, meaning plus one standard deviation and minus one standard deviation of the mean. Uh, and 95% fall within two standard deviations of the mean. And almost everybody, 99.7% fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So. So the cool thing about the normal distribution is many real world scenarios uh, have a distribution that's pretty close to normal, that's approximated by the normal distribution. And there's a few other cool properties about the normal distribution that lets us use it in a lot of inference.